Let us now discuss question number 1A from our May 2024 examination paper. This question is on accounting standard 16. It talks about borrowing cost. Shall we see this question? Question number 1A from May 24 paper, it says, On 1st of April 2023, Green Limited started construction of an office building. They have themselves told qualifying asset. So, we don't have to check whether it is qualifying asset or not. The land under the building is regarded as a separate asset. It is not part of qualifying. Land need not be developed. Land is already there. Just have to build the building over it. So, building is a qualifying asset. Building will be a qualifying asset. We capitalize the interest, increase the cost and also depreciate only building, not land. For the purpose of construction, company raised a specific loan of 14 lakhs. Aha. We have 14 lakhs specific loan. From the borrowings, first we'll take specific loan out at specific rate of interest. Only for the balance, we'll apply general borrowings. If there is more than one general borrowing, see here, there are two general borrowings. We're going to find the weighted average cost of the rate and then apply. After that, they've told that uh, you've taken specific loan of 14 lakhs at 12% and uh, for a period during which this money was not utilized and kept idle, ideally, idly in the bank. If you kept it idly in the bank, it is given you 15,000 rupees interest. So, what do you do with this 15,000? You deduct it from the total borrowing cost to be capitalized. Just before adding it to the asset, you put certain, sorry, you deduct that idle funds pay interest 15,000 rupees. Are you getting it? On the specific borrowings, you will compute interest for the entire period. Though it is utilized for only certain period. Are you getting it? Very good. Then the company's other borrowings are like this. We have taken two more loans. One of 20 lakh, one of 30 lakhs. Two general borrowings are there. So, when we apply general borrowings, rate, should I apply 15 or 8? Average. 15 plus 8 divided by 2? No, 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 no. 20 lakh into 15 percent will get interest. 30 lakh into 8 percent will get interest. Total interest by total borrowing, if you do, you will get weighted average rate. That weighted average rate has to be applied after eliminating specific borrowing from the total borrowing. And that expense is also not one time incurring. That they have incurred in 1, 2, 3, 4 installments. So, we need to find the weighted average cost. But before we find the weighted average cost, we will eliminate the specific borrowing during that weighted average cost. And for non-specific borrowing, we will apply the general borrowing weighted average rate. See here, first of April, we have taken 4 lakh rupees. This 4 lakh rupees will be completely from specific borrowing. How much is total specific borrowing? 14 lakh. So, this 4 lakh will be complete specific borrowing. This 10 lakh, specific borrowing. This 25 lakh and 5 lakh, general borrowing. Are you getting it? So, this 4 lakh is spent for 12 months. So, this 10 lakh is spent only from 1st of August. We will still compute interest from 1st of April. That is the date on which we have taken our specific borrowing from. So, specific borrowing. So, it is utilized in the middle of the year to end of the year. Interest will be computed for the whole year. Specific borrowing, not interest based on the time. It is the entire interest on specific borrowing that should be considered as a part of borrowing cost. Subject to elimination of that interest income earned on that ETL funds. Shall we solve it? Very good. So, to start with, I will take these costs. When is the building complete? The construction started on 1st of April and was completed on 31st of January. Remember, we need to compute interest only till 31st January. We should not count it for February and March. Why? Once the asset is ready to be used, interest capitalization will stop. This is a slightly tricky question because people, we are usually used to the feeling that asset is ready at the end of its useful life and will take it at the end of its useful life. Sorry, we will take it for the end of the year usually. That should not be what is done in this case. Shall we start? Let me start with it. So, first expenditure is incurred in April. So, I will take April to July. So, I will take April, sorry, April to January, entire period. That amount is going to be specific borrowing, 4 lakhs. So, I will write April to January, April 2023 to January 2024. Amount that I have incurred is 4 lakh rupees. See, this is going to be specific borrowing. So is this. From here it is going to be general. So 4 lakh. What is the period? April to January. How many months? 10 months. Let me write 10 months. Nature is specific. And next borrowing is on 1st of August. 1st of August to January 2024. So August, September, October, November, December, January. How many months? 6 months. Amount is 10 lakh. Our specific borrowing is 14 lakh. 10 lakh, 4 lakh of specific borrowing is over. Till 10 lakh is remaining. I will take 10 lakh here. Specific completely. It's not partly specific, partly general. 
and though it is six months, when I compute interest, I'll do it for how many months? Ten months. Though it is six months, when I'm computing interest, I'll compute it for how many months? Ten months. After August to January over. December to January. December, January. How many months? Two months. Amount is 25 lakh 2 by 12 general borrowing. Last borrowing is 31st of January. This amount is uh, why? We write 5 lakh. Period is 0. 31st, if they would have told at least 1st January, I would have taken one month. 31st January, that is incurred just before the asset is ready. 0 months, 0 days. How do I compute interest? 0. It is general, but interest will be 0. Specific borrowing is at 12%. Don't forget this 15,000 which is to be deducted. General borrowing, I need to find the average. Shall I take this 12% first for specific borrowing? I am repeating this all again. Those specific borrowings is used only for 6 months to the extent of 10 lakh. Interest needs to be computed for entire 10 months. Entire 10 months. Sir, but we did not use it for first 4 months. That is the reason you got that idli funds. No. 15,000. Idli funds pay interest. That we will deduct here later. After I find my total borrowing cost here, I am going to deduct my interest income of 15,000 what I received. That is the reason I am computing here. Sir, why do we deduct here? Why do we do for 10 months here? Can I do for 6 months here? No. Because the rate of borrowing and rate of investing will be different. You borrowed at 12%. If you keep it in SB bank, savings bank, no, you will get only 2% interest. And moreover, a company will have current account. There they won't get interest only. They would have to keep it into an FD or any short term deposit so that they will get interest. Interest rates won't match. So remember once again for specific borrowing, compute interest for entire borrowing period, not for the period of utilization. For the unutilized period, if you have earned any interest income, you deduct it. You won't do that for general borrowing because it is general. Am I right? Then general borrowing, what is the interest rate? We don't know. There are two, 15 and 8. Shall we find the average rate? 20 lakh is at 15 percent and 30 lakh is at 8 percent. Multiply 20 lakh into 15 percent, 3 lakh and 30 lakh into 8 percent is 2 lakh 40. Can I say together 5 lakh 40 thousand is the interest for 50 lakh? What is the average rate? Yeah, 50 uh, lakh for 5 lakh 40 by 50 lakh, 10.8 percent. So I would take here for this 25 lakh for two months at 10.8 percent. What do I get? This is 0 anyways. 4 lakh into 10 by 12 into 12 percent. 40,000. 10 lakh into 10 by 12 into 12 percent. And uh, 25 lakh into 2 by 12 into 10.8 percent. 45, here it is 0. So together, what do we get? 1 lakh. 1 lakh 85,000. In that, we will eliminate that 15,000 interest income. 1,70,000 is the amount to be capitalized. What is the total cost incurred on the asset? 14 plus 25 plus 5. 44 lakh plus 1 lakh 70. 45 lakh 70,000 will become the cost of the asset. Observe here. Cost of building is all of those expenditure incurred in 4 installments together. 44 lakh. Add interest to be capitalized 1 lakh 70. 45 lakh 70,000 is the total amount to be capitalized. Shall we write the entry? Let us write it. I will write building account debit 45,70. In this 44 lakh, I need to pay the contractor for constructing. You can write bank account. And then the balance amount, I would write it to interest. Later, when I pay the interest and write interest to bank, to the extent of 1,70,000, interest will not be transferred to PL because it is capitalized. Balance of the interest has to be charged to PL. Now, they further asked us to compute depreciation in this question. See. Over journal, over capitalizing amount computation over initial journal entry over depreciation for the building is been asked. They are telling the useful life is 20 years and we are following straight line method. Life is estimated. Is there any scrap value given? Nothing. So we will assume the scrap of the building is 0, 20 years is useful life, SLM method. Can we find the depreciation? Very easy. 45,70,000 will be the cost. And our useful life is 20 years. Now you tell me scrap value is 0. What is the depreciation? 45,70 minus 0 divided by? Very good. 45,70. Sorry. What do we get? 
टू लैक ट्वेंटी इज डेप्रिसिएशन एम ए राइट वेन डिड वी कंस्ट्रक्ट दैट बिल्डिंग वेन इज इट रेडी फॉर यूटिलाइजेशन बाई फर्स्ट ऑफ इयर इट इज रेडी बाई कंप्लीट ऑन थर्टी फर्स्ट ऑफ जनवरी नॉट इवन फर्स्ट थर्टी फर्स्ट ऑफ जनवरी सो ड्यूरिंग टू थाउजेंड ट्वेंटी थ्री ट्वेंटी फोर बिल्डिंग इज रेडी फॉर यूज ओनली फॉर टू मंथ्स फेब्रवरी एंड मार्च सो डेप्रिसिएशन ऑफ टू लैख ट्वेंटी एट थाउजेंड फाइव हंड्रेड इज पर एन एम हाउ मच इज डेप्रिसिएशन फॉर टू थाउजेंड ट्वेंटी थ्री ट्वेंटी फोर एल डू टू Very good. This is the depreciation for that year, and carrying amount of the asset will be forty five lakh seventy minus two lakh twenty eight thousand five hundred. Sorry, the thirty eight thousand eighty three, forty five lakh seventy thousand minus thirty eight thousand eighty three. Forty forty five lakh thirty one thousand nine hundred. This is what is being asked. We'll pass journal entry also for this. i would write the entry as depreciation account debit depreciation account right? account debit 38083 to building account 38083 this is my journal entry and i am done with all the sub portions that's been asked computing the borrowing cost to be capitalized identifying passing the initial journal entry identifying the depreciation as well as the carrying amount of the building and all this for 7 marks